Hey guys, it's Luke in need of a haircut and welcome to this vlog here. I am at the Hill Aerospace Museum in Ogden, Utah. This is actually my last day in Utah, so I figured might as well actually do what I've been meaning to do for a while. Now usually <laughs> I, I do have the tendency to sleep into the afternoon. In fact, right now it's three o'clock. Um, however, this morning I actually woke up early, but I was distracted by the uh, fighter jets doing their routines. Like right outside my hotel is the, uh, the Hill Air Force Base. Um, and my goodness, some of the routines that they were pulling off, oh, breathtaking. So I sat in my trunk while I edited a couple of New York vlogs and that was my morning instead of actually coming here first thing which was my plan so let's check out some planes jets and well basically whatever covers aerospace even before heading inside you're met with the gargantuan c124 i forget what this guy is <laughs> here you have the b1 lancer oh my goodness and over there we have a trojan Oh, that is one huge jet plane. Now, I believe that this one carries the biggest payload, basically, of any jet fighter. Which uh, makes it a pretty darn good uh, long-range bomber there. And then there's also a few other aircraft out here. But we can have a look at those a bit later. First off... Let's go have a look inside. Here we are entering the Rex Hadley Gallery. Just had a quick look at the map and unfortunately the plane that I came to see is not on display at the moment. So that's all right, gives me an excuse to uh, come back again sometime and have another look when that pavilion is open. And here we go, starting off in the right era have a model F flyer gosh <laughs> wow definitely a lot different to the uh, to the jets that I saw flying around this morning I tell you and here we have a recreation of the Taylor Wright engine yeah I'm quite glad that um, the flights that I'll be on in the next couple of days have a lot bigger engines that's a mighty big propeller though. Remember, especially when you're around fuel. <laughs> and in here, this exhibit depicts a typical mission briefing hut in England during World War II. Speaking of which, I actually haven't gone around to watching the Apple TV series Masters of the Air yet. So definitely after being here in the mood to check that out. And here we travel further into the modern era of aviation with a Boeing B-17. An impressive payload here. And a little turret near the back. And also a turret up the top there as well. If it wants to focus, there we go. Quite an impressive feat of engineering for the year. Maybe just like what, a little less than 30-ish years after the first flight. Remind you, going from something like that to this is just incredible just showing you the magnification like there's my finger you can see my camera clearly in the lens there like holy moly that is some camera so photography in the military aerial reconnaissance was a very important thing and these aircrafts just made it all that more accessible to take high definition 
images from a higher altitude than what was previously able to. Now I do need to also preface a lot of what I'm talking about. Um, I may sound like I know what I'm talking about, but as a lot of my friends will um, attest to, I spitball, I just, a lot of it might not actually be factually true. If you want to correct me in the comments, I'm more than welcome to be corrected, but this is basically just my brother. He was a huge military freak. And although I don't tend to look into the stuff a lot myself, a lot of it basically sinks in when he talks about like military stuff and whatnot. So, um, and especially when it comes to aircraft, like, I love aircraft. Um, I love flying, I love helicopters. Uh, my goodness, get me in a plane and I'll be a happy boy. Get me in a helicopter, I'll be even happier. Um, so yeah, just, just keep that in mind. I may be wrong. Please lovingly correct me down below. And then going from that one, we then have the Super Fortress. I don't know why I had to add music to that because it's just as impressive without it. It's a shame that we can't get underneath this B-29 because my goodness, I want to see inside. Everything about this is just bigger in every single way. The engines are literally twice the size. I mean, look at that. It's got a gun to it. Like, this is my hand up close. I'm still a meter away. Like, I can't touch. So I can't exactly show you. See? Do not touch. You're not touching me. She's touching me. I'm not touching you. Oh, you're not touching me. Not touching. Touching me. So I'm not going to. But just know, this is one huge engine even compared to those. And here we have a replica of the Trinity Bomb, which is covered in the movie Oppenheimer. If you haven't seen Oppenheimer, my goodness, what are you doing with your life other than other things than watching movies and probably saving lives and many other things. But it was a great movie, a great insight into the drama behind rather than just the facts of building such a destructive device in that day and age. But next to it, we have the Mark VI atomic bomb replica. Now this guy is, I mean, that's the Trinity bomb. So this one here, yeah, it was an improved version of the bombs that were dropped on Nagasaki. But thankfully, they were never used in the end. And then here we have the Mark 7. And next to it is the Air to a Genie. So this is a little, um, air-to-air anti-aircraft missile. Now, an amazing part of this museum is the admission fee. It was free. Um, I don't think you really get anything much like this probably in the rest of the world, let alone America, where you can just come in and have a look at all these amazing, donated, well-kept aircraft for free. Um, Pretty sure even the aircraft museum in Adelaide, both of them you have to pay for. So this is just incredible that it's free. So if you're in the Ogden area, um, check it out. And as this isn't like a guided tour or anything of this museum, I'm not gonna show you every uh, plane here, just enough to let you know how amazing this place is and probably to get you wanting to visit. See, this is a huge hall with a lot of aircraft and we only covered like three or four. Um, so now we're heading into another pavilion with a few more aircraft. And so they're expanding on this museum, but sadly the aircrafts that I was actually most excited to see are in the new gallery. So that will be opening spring of this year. 
So hopefully I'll be back to have a look at some of the amazing jets that will be in this exhibition, especially the F-117 and others. So in the meantime, into the Linguist Stewart Gallery. And as I was saying before, I am now a happy boy. Here are the hairy chop doors. You. <laughs> and here we have a look inside of a CH3E, affectionately known as the Jolly Green Giant, because this is a big one. I have to keep walking, keep walking, keep walking, keep walking. <laughs> Still not over there. there. We go. That is a big chunk of a helicopter, and next to it, a husky. I mean, twin blade helicopters. Like, how? <laughs> like, seriously, how? Um, that's just crazy. Amazing, amazing innovation, but just, just how? <laughs> so the Huskies themselves were primarily a rescue helicopter, able to carry like thousands of pounds of, you know, firefighting equipment, foam, you name it, they'd be able to carry it. And <laughs> check out the exhaust pipe. <laughs> bonkers, absolutely bonkers. And then we can actually have a look in the back here of the Jolly Green. There we go. That's pretty, pretty cool. Nice and spacious. I could probably turn one of these into a, uh, into a little home and, you know, fly about. <laughs> oh, that would require me, A, having money, and B, getting a pilot's license. Of which the amount of celebrities that have died in their own helicopters, or flying their own helicopters, um, as much as I love helicopters, uh, I'll let someone else fly it for me. And then we go from a jolly to a super jolly. I mean, yikes, that is massive. <laughs> Just look at it. Beautiful and massive. And check out that payload on the side there. And just the engine. And that blade, almost as big as Cloud Sword, probably not that big. <laughs> and yeah, about twice the size on the inside. That is, whenever I think of a military helicopter, I think this is usually the one that comes to mind. Well, that actually took a lot longer than what I thought it would. Um, it's now four o'clock. When I said it was three o'clock before, it was actually quarter to three. I didn't look at my watch until I got inside and that still wasn't all the planes. But yeah, that'll do it for this vlog, guys. Really cool seeing a lot of the uh, aviation history up close. I enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the little that I, that I shot because I got distracted a lot of the time. This is why I can't vlog. I mean, if you've watched my vlogs this far, you kind of already know that. So until the next one, guys, um, or a vlog. <laughs>